Hi everyone, it's Jewel Hill from Kazaz here. Uh, today I'd like to share with you a video on how I'm creating what I'm calling magic flowers, uh, which is how I've coloured the flowers along here. Obviously it doesn't have to be flowers, you could do this technique with any, any open sort of image stamps that you happen to have, um, and then um, you can do it, it doesn't have to be flowers. So these are just a few cards that I have made using this technique. Um, so it's just a little plain gift card. And um, you can see that they, each flower, each time you do it, it comes out slightly differently. I've also got a scrapbook page here that I've done um, using the same technique. So you can see that around the edge there. So it can be used on a number of different things, on art journal pages or whatever you like. Um, but as I said, I'm calling it Magic Flowers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to spray our card with the Dilutions Ink Sprays. Now I'm going to use Bubblegum Pink and London Blue here. You can use pretty much any colours, um, but I have found that the brighter colours do work a bit better. And I'm just going to demonstrate on the white paper here, just to show you. If you hold your spray back from the paper, you'll get a nice lighter spray, which I'm just going to demonstrate with a different one because that one's almost out. So holding it back, you get a nice light spray. If you hold it nice and close, you get a more concentrated spray. And that is the type of spray that you want for this technique. You want to hold it close and you want to get them nice and close together like that. You want to use two colours that are going to mix well together, so you can see that this pink and blue uh, mix and become a nice purple colour. Um, so those two were the Peony Blush and the Periwinkle Blue. Uh, I'm hoping to use the original two, though, to do this card because they are a bit brighter and they give a bit brighter result. So we want to spray them nice and close. As I said, these two are almost empty. Yep. So I'm spraying nice and concentrated in a number of different areas onto the card and I want to make sure the card is covered with the ink and it doesn't matter if they run into each other a bit because that's what we want. We want the combination of the two colours together. So you can't really see it on the video but that card, it is picking up a bit of the light. That card is pretty much covered now. Now sometimes when you spray things, people will roll paper towel across. With this technique you don't really want to. You want to try and keep as much ink on the paper as you can. You can let it run a little bit, but I'd try not to let it run too much because um, you don't really want your colours bleeding. You just want to make sure that the whole card is covered. And then we're going to dry that with a heat gun uh, just to speed up the process. You could just put it aside to dry if you like. Um, but I will go and dry that now. Okay, so now I've dried that. You can see in the light it is showing a little bit of colour through, um, but that's okay. You won't really notice it on the finished product, and um, that's just part of it. I did forget to mention that I am using the Kazaz Smooth Black cardstock. It is a really good quality and it's nice and thick card at 270 GSM, um, so it's a really good card to use for this technique. And I'm going to just stamp and heat emboss with this stamp. And I prefer to use the Perfect Medium ink pad. This should work with pretty much any embossing ink, um, although I haven't actually checked others to try. So if I do find anything, I will put a note in the comments for the video. Now all the items I'm using are of course available from my brand new web store. You can get all the fantastic Kazaz products available on there. For these bigger stamps, I do love these acrylic blocks. Um, they've got a handle on the back and it makes it much easier when you're using these big blocks. So I'm going to put the Puff Static Away pillow on there first. This is quite important. You need to make sure that your paper is really dry. We don't want the embossing powder sticking where we don't want it. I'll just give that a little bit more ink. Remember when you are inking up a stamp, you just want to tap gently all over um, to get the ink on. 
And I'm just going to stamp that down. And just give a gentle push all the way around and give the ink time to transfer. Now you don't need to push super hard, uh, although the bigger the stamp, usually the bit harder you push is the general rule. Um, and just make sure you don't move it. So I'm just giving that, as I said, a push all the way around and timed for the ink to transfer. And then you can just peel that off. And you can't really see this because it is a clear ink. I'll just get my container of white embossing powder. And I usually, if I've only got this much left, just tip it in. Give that a shake around. And a nice tap off. And there you have your image. Now you can brush off any excess powder that you've got and fix up any little bits where you've missed. Like so. And then I'm just going to heat that with the heat gun. Now it is important when you're heating your embossing powder that you don't overheat it. You can um, cook it too much and then it goes a bit funny looking. Um, but you want to hold your heat gun around about two inches back and just watch for the change. So the white is a bit hard to see, but it goes from a dull white powder to a shiny, um, a shiny uh, texture, a smooth texture when it's heated. So just watch for that change and tilt your card in the light so that you can see the change when it happens. Okay, so here we have our heat embossed image. And now this is where the magic begins. So we're just going to use the white linen dilutions paint. Um, it's amazing how many different things we use this white paint for. And today we're going to use it to paint our flower. So I'm just grabbing a paintbrush. And I'm just scooping a little bit out and putting it on my craft sheet here to the side. Um, that's because this paint, being in a tub like this with such a wide lid on it, it does dry up if you leave the lid off. So always um, take a little bit out and put the lid back on. Now this brush um, is a bit wet, I've just added a bit more water. You really want your paint to flow on quite easily for this technique. Um, so you can always add a little bit of water to water it down a bit if you're having trouble getting it to flow on. And all you're going to do here is just brush it on and you can see the magic starting to happen. The paint picks up the colour from these dilution sprays that we sprayed on earlier. And you can see here, it's picked up the blue and a little bit of the pink, which has given us a purple colour. If you go over the top of these white lines, I just give them a bit of a brush with my finger and that brings them up. So all we're gonna do now is just complete painting. You have to excuse my camera work. I got a new video camera for Christmas and this is the first chance I've actually had to try it out. So it's a bit exciting. And this has come up beautiful dark purple over on this bit. So you just paint it. You don't have to be a fantastic painter. I'm certainly not by any stretch of the imagination. But it's just about laying the colour on there and getting it on. So I tend to do tend to work either from the centre of the petal out towards the edge or the other way from the outer edge back in. Working along the petal of the flower so that you can get the nice strokes going along the petal. So this section here has obviously had more of the blue spray under it and that's really picked up the blue so you can see how the different colours are coming through on that flower. So once again, rinse your brush in between every couple of petals just to make sure that you're not carrying one colour across from one section into another. And just working your way around all the petals or all the areas of your design. Now these flowers come from the spring collection in the Kazaz range. And I will link to all the products that I've used in the description below so that you can jump onto the website and order anything that you would like. 
as I said earlier, you can use different coloured dilution sprays and the different colours will give a different effect. I did do some earlier today where I used the periwinkle blue and the peony pink and um, they gave, I'll just bring this one over, they gave a more muted look, a um, bit more of a pastel -y sort of colour and you compare that to the brightness of this one. Um, so you can see there the difference in colour that you get. Um, neither of them is right or wrong, uh, it's just a different colour. So you can go for the brighter ones or you can go for the lighter ones, whichever you prefer. So I'll just finish off this one. As you can see I'm only doing it really quite quickly, you don't need to spend a huge amount of time doing it. Um, once your project's finished, you know, you don't notice the little details. Sometimes people spend ages and ages colouring something in. And, um, you know, it looks really nice, don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, sometimes a quicker do job does just as well at the end of the day. So I've just put them on. I'm going to leave it at that on this one. Now, the other thing you can do is we've now got the Distress Splatter Brush. Um, so this is great for putting, adding white dots to things. So with that leftover paint, I'm just going to spray a bit of water on there. Water it down a bit. Pick some of that up in the ends of the bristles of the paintbrush. Oops, which you can't see. Pick some of them up. And then I'm just going to flick. So holding your brush in one hand and holding halfway down the things in the other. And just flick some spots of white over. And you will see that that then, hopefully you can pick it up, that picks up the colour as well that was underneath that we sprayed on earlier. And the other thing that's going to pick up the colour as well is stickles. So when we add stickles to the centres of the flowers, um, that will also, because it wets it, it picks up the colour. So we can just put them on there. Add lots on because we like lots of bling. So we put those on and that gives us nice and shiny centres but it will bring out more of the colour as that dries as well as it sits there for a little while. It will bring up more of the colour. So you can see the colour coming through there on those dots to the side. And that is how you do magic flowers or, you know, magic, whatever else you want to do. You could do butterflies if you've got nice big areas. The only thing to watch when you're selecting images to use this technique with is, like, this had the lines on the petals here. Um, it didn't matter if I went over them a bit, but I have done some other things where you really kind of noticed it and it didn't look as good if you went over your heat embossed image. So something with nice big areas is the easiest. So thanks for watching. Please, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it with your friends and pop on over to my web store and check out the fantastic range of colours in the dilutions and the range of stamps that we have that you could do this technique with. If you've got any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Thanks.